Hi, I'm Emma, and this is the Creative D- Edition. Our mission is to inspire creatives to discover, grow, and own their brand. If we're just meeting for the very first time, my name is Emma, and I've been hosting the Creative Edition podcast for the last few years. This was originally the Content Creatives podcast, and it evolved to the Creative Edition podcast to have a little bit more brand alignment with my personal Instagram and my social media channels, Emma's Edition. I have been a full-time creator since 2020, but I actually started creating content on the internet. I started with my blog in 2014 during my senior year year of college. So I'm very excited that you found today's episode because we're talking about how to reach the right audience on social media as a content creator. Because I think in this day and age, there are so many creators out there, but there's also millions of people consuming content online every day across various platforms, whether it's TikTok, Pinterest, YouTube Shorts, or Snapchat, right? I think one thing that creators need to keep in mind, especially if they're newer in their creator career, is that you don't necessarily need to reach everybody, but you definitely want to reach somebody, right? You want to have that target audience in mind. Because reaching the right audience on social media is really essential for building community and clarifying what type of content that you're actually creating on social media. I feel like no matter what your niche is as a creator, whether you are a content creator who likes to share your travel adventures and you go around the world and it's your goal to visit every country and you create content about that, or you're a creator who is a fashion or style creator and so you're showcasing how to style the latest trends, or maybe you're showing only thrifted fashion and you're showing how you can still, you know, stay really trendy and like find all these trends at your local thrift shops. No matter what your niche is as a content creator, I really do think that one of your main goals, whether you're a new creator or a more mature creator, is to continue to reach your target audience. And so we gave a few examples already, but maybe you're a foodie creator and you decide that your target audience is couples, small families, or maybe roommates who want to cook with one another. Because for you, you are in a specific life stage where you're just cooking for two and you want to showcase all the fun meals that you can create, you know, cooking for two. Or maybe if you are a creator who loves houseplants, your target audience might be first-time houseplant owners, right? Or people interested in adding plants to their brand new apartment or their new space. And so how you reach a target audience or the right audience on social media, I feel like you really can do that by setting up your profile on social media and also optimizing your content so that enables you to reach the right audience on TikTok, on Instagram, on Facebook. So we are going to start off with just a few tips on how to set up your social media profile so you can reach that right audience for your social media. So tip number one, friends, this might be something that's already in your profile or maybe it's not and that's okay. It's a really easy one to miss. Tip number one is to include your name in your profile or your bio. And a big reason why is as a content creator, you want people to know your name and your username. Sometimes I think people just have their username and they don't actually have their first name and last name or just their first name. And I think it's important to remember that your target audience started following you because maybe it's a specific interest or niche you create content about, but in order to further like connect with you and start to build that trust in that relationship, I think knowing you by your name is really important. And so don't be afraid to update your bio, update you know your social media profiles and make sure that your name's in there so your community starts to understand who you are and connect with you. Tip number two, friends, is to include either a mission statement or purpose and your content pillars in your bio or your profile. I think you can choose to do a shortened version of your mission statement. I think sometimes like, I don't know, like I feel like I came from the business world. So I really love having a mission statement around like what I create content about. It just ties everything together and identifies like why you are creating content. If you don't have the character like room for doing a full mission statement, maybe you do an abbreviated version of it, or you can just include your content pillars. And so for example, you might put like for me, right, Emma, Seattle content creator, 
style and lifestyle. Um, like those are, you know, the main pillars I create content about. Or if you're a foodie creator, right, you might put food or you might put home cooked recipes or, you know, you can get as specific as you want, um, as long as it's related to your content pillars or your niche. So what you create content about. And why this is vital information to add to your social media profile is because you basically signal to your current and potential audience what type of content they can expect from you, right? So I feel like, again, like I think sometimes people are con- newer content creators are like, I can't put myself in a box. Like I can't just create content about one thing. And it's like, it's not necessarily that you have to only create content about one thing, but can you communicate, you know, in a few words, what people can expect from you? And I think that's totally fair, right? Because I think for us, if you flip it on you know, the consumer side, there's probably other creators out there or accounts out there that you started following because you knew that you can always find recipes from them, or you could always find like a funny meme that you can share with your friends and family. Maybe it's like something that's like culturally significant to you. Like I always like share all the Filipino humor with my friends and family. I have like cousins who will send me things or my sister and I will send things back and forth when it has to do or it's related, you know, anything to like being Filipino or whatever that may be like recipes or, you know, just like funny skits. That being said, right, like we follow these accounts because we know what to expect from them. And so I think another like additional reason why it's really important to include like either a shortened version of your mission statement and or your pillars is also, I I really think like we sometimes forget that people and even potential brand partners, it they literally will spend like three seconds on your page and they evaluate whether or not they want to consume more of your content or they want to follow you, right? And so I think if you can just update your bio and make it really easy for your target audience to determine whether or not they're going to find your social media page and your content either informative, entertaining, helpful, or aspirational, then I think like that really just like helps you continue to reach that target audience. So tip number three, you guys, I think another important fact to include in your social media profile in your bio is either, you know, your city or your state, but overall I would add a general location. So if you want to build community with an audience in your region, I think adding where you live really helps. You can add your city, you can add your state or your general area. I know if you're not comfortable specifically stating like the exact, you know, suburb of Los Angeles that you live in, right? You might just put LA. But I think why this is important, right, is because we also know that like regions are really, really big. And so for example, like you might be a Southern California foodie creator, you know, that's a huge area, right? Southern California is absolutely massive. For you, you might be focused only on Orange County and LA. So you include that in your bio, or maybe you are in San Diego. So you only include San Diego, or maybe you only visit the beach city. So you might actually be like list out the beach cities like Laguna Beach or San Clemente or Dana Point, right? I feel like just like calling out that general region or like if you want to get more specific, I think that really helps like a target audience connect with you, right? Because they know like, oh, like this person shares content about this area. And so for me, I call out Seattle, right? But I definitely cover like the greater Seattle area. Like I cover, you know, pumpkin patches an hour north of Seattle and I cover experiences south of Seattle. But I put Seattle because most people do search for like Seattle related things and but I also know not everybody like lives in Seattle, but that that helps my audience understand like what content I am creating content about or like where most of my content resides. So tip number four, friends, another thing you should include in your bio if you want to reach that target audience is an e- your email address. So I know people are like, but there's like an email button. And so I think one thing to keep in mind though is if you're someone who is looking at social media on desktop, there's no email button, especially on Instagram friends. And so I think it's really important to include your email address like on all your social media platforms. Then that way, like people just know how to reach you directly. All right, friends. Now that we've talked about optimizing your bio and your social media, you know, profile, like no matter that's Instagram or that's TikTok, right? I really think now it's like time to like dive into how to optimize your content. Sometimes you hear like industry jargon or you hear other creators talking about like optimizing your content for search. And really what that means is just like, how do you make your content more discoverable so that your target audience can find your content, right? 
So for this, friends, I think tip number one in optimizing your content. So content is, you know, Instagram posts, it's carousels, it's reels, it's stories, TikTok, right? Same thing. It might be like carousels or short form videos for YouTube, right? It's really important. I think people on YouTube understand it's, it is the second largest search platform in the world. And so I think a lot of people probably are just more aware on like how to write for search on YouTube. But you know, regardless, if you're not on YouTube or YouTube shorts, I think this is still really helpful. So I think one way to help optimize your content and in all these platforms is using relevant hashtags in your posts. Okay, friends. So it's really, it's really not 2014 or 2016 anymore where hashtags is like a giant growth tool, right? People are like, use 30 hashtags so you can grow. Like this is not, that is not Th- th- that is a different era like of hashtags. Today, hashtags are helpful because they help categorize your content on these platforms, right? So there's literally like billions of content like posted on Instagram each day. And anytime you're able to tell the platform like, hey, like this is a post about food in Seattle. Or this is a post about a restaurant in LA, right? Like you can use hashtags basically as labels for like what your content is and you're telling the social media platforms what that video, photo, post, caption is all about. And so today in this day and age, right, like I would switch that mindset about hashtags. It's not about like driving tons of growth. It's really about organizing your your content so people can find your content who, you know, if they're looking for it. And so For Instagram, just because the platform I'm on most, right, the recommendation in this day and age is to use a smaller number of hashtags related to your content. So for example, if you're a travel content creator and you're showcasing like, you know, USA travel destinations, you know, you might be showcasing different like national parks, or maybe you're showcasing like different bucket list areas around the United States, right? The hashtags that you might use in your reels or your in-feed posts might include Hashtag USA road trip, hashtag travel bucket list, hashtag US travel, hashtag USA travels, right? Like it, you're using relevant hashtags for like what that piece of content is. So people who are looking for USA, different unique locations on like where to go around America, like are able to find your content. Tip number two, guys, if you're trying to optimize your content on Instagram and TikTok, I always recommend geotagging your location in those reels, in those TikTok videos, in those posts, because by tagging the city or state that you reside in, you actually allow your target audience to discover your content. And again, if you're not comfortable like tagging your exact town, I would recommend just tagging like the next largest city right next to you or your state. And so this is something that I do, especially like on TikTok. Like I think it's, especially with TikTok's algorithm, it's like so sensitive to like where it is, right? And so like all TikTok users, like in the greater Seattle area, like if you're looking for things to do, like my hope is that you find my page and my content because I'm always tagging Seattle. I'm always using relevant hashtags like for Seattle TikTok, right? And yeah, like that's my goal. I like want to make sure that like my audience on TikTok is like locally based, like in Washington and showcasing all those things that you can do you know, around the Seattle area, greater Seattle area and around Washington state. Tip number three, friends, if you also want to optimize your content, this is something newer that I started doing. I was reading Gary Vanderchuk's latest book, Day Trading Attention. And I read this tip and I was like, why haven't I been doing this? Like this is, I'm like, you could literally adjust your next few posts and do this. I would recommend calling out your target audience in your content. Like I have a specific, like, for me, like personally as a content creator, my target audience is millennial women, primarily in the greater Seattle area, in Washington state and in like major US cities. Like I feel like that's always been like my target audience, like since I started has always been millennial women, just cause like we're in that life stage. I understand millennial women. I understand their taste cause I am a millennial woman. I was like not calling that out too. And so, and this year I adjusted my content strategy because I'm traveling less, right? And, you know, at this day and age, like I have a 16 month old baby at home and I'm still not traveling. Like I was like prior to having a child, like before I had Broxton, I went to like four countries. I was like traveling every month and I'm, that's just not the life stage I'm on right now. And so for me, I'm doing a lot more focus, like Seattle things to do, and I'm having a lot of fun with it. And so this is like a practical tip, literally like call out your target audience 
on your photos, in your captions, in your short form videos. Like I'm literally calling out like Seattle girlies or Seattle millennial or, you know, millennial girls, like how to style loose fitting jeans, right? Because like that's like a very specific thing because I know a lot of millennial women literally are like, how do I style these jeans? Like they're so big and like they're white leg. Like I haven't worn wide leg jeans like since before high school because skinny jeans, we can't, you know, we're so, so trendy. And so anyways, like I think just like being able to like call out your target audience, like helps your audience discover you. And it helps like the platform understand like, oh, who you're trying to reach so they can show your content to that designated audience so they continue to stay on the platform and spend more time on the platform. So for example, friends, I use me as an example, but another example is if you're a makeup influencer, the first three seconds of your Instagram reel might read a makeup beginner's guide to angled brushes, right? In the copy and the title of the video, like someone new to makeup knows that that video is for them. It also caught my attention because I have no idea like what these angled brushes are about. Like I barely know what I'm doing each day, like putting on my makeup. And so I had to save that because I was like, that's so helpful. They literally like call out the niche, it's makeup, and it's a beginner's guide to angled brushes. So like a specific tool that you might use as a beginner, like, you know, learning or experimenting with makeup. If you're an outdoor secret content creator, like on TikTok, right, your hook for your video might read, every hiker needs this. And then so for you, it might be like, oh, okay, like I'm someone who's new to hiking. Like I want to know what I need. Like, is it shoes? Is it jackets? Is it headlamp? Is it poles? Like whatever is it? And then that way, like if you're a potential hiker, you might stop and be like, okay, like let me like watch the rest of this video because it's aligned with my interests. All right, friends. So I hope that was helpful in helping you understand like how to reach the right audience on social media as a content creator. And just as a quick recap, friends, we talked about optimizing both your social media profile and your content. We talked about including your name in your bio, as well as your mission statement or your content pillars in your bio. And by the way, you could be like checking right now as like you're listening to this episode. I also talked about, you know, adding your location. So whether that's city or city or state inside your social media profile, I think it's very, very helpful. Also adding your email address because that email button is not on desktop. And so make sure your email address is there and so people know how to reach you. And then we talked about optimizing your content. We talked about using relevant hashtags in your posts and like shifting your mindset where it's like hashtags not, aren't necessarily for growth. It really is for organizing and like labeling your content. And we also talked about how it's helpful to geotag your location, you know, on TikTok, on Instagram, on YouTube shorts, right? Like geotag your location on your, of your posts as well as calling out your target audience. I hope you enjoyed today's episode, friends. And if you enjoyed today's episode, you know, please rate and review the podcast, share this with a content creator friend, and let me know what you want to listen to next. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. If you enjoyed today's episode, please rate, review, and recommend the podcast to a friend. If we haven't connected on Instagram yet, you can find us at Emma's Edition and at The Creative Edition. Sign up for our email newsletter and join our Facebook group, and we'll see you guys next time.